Dr. Wilmer Leon here, and welcome to My Final Point. My analysis today is focused on Dr. Ben Carson, and it's entitled, Dr. Ben Carson Jumps Jim Crow. While speaking at the 2013 Value Voters Summit in Washington, D.C. in October of this year, Dr. Carson said the following, you know, Obamacare is, I think, the worst thing that has happened in this nation since slavery. It is slavery in a way because it's making all of us subservient to the government, and it never was about health care. It was always about control, end quote. Now, Dr. Carson is a world-renowned American neurosurgeon. He's a brilliant physician with an incredibly compelling and motivational story. Born into poverty in Detroit in 1951 and raised by a single mother with only a third grade education, Dr. Carson became the first surgeon to separate conjoined twins and the youngest to head a surgical department. His focus, his work ethic, and commitment to excellence should be emulated by as many as possible. But over the past year, Dr. Carson has emerged on the political scene as a spokesperson for conservative interests. And again, most recently saying Obamacare is the worst thing in this nation since slavery? Really? I mean, I understand political diatribe and hyperbole, but the worst thing in America since slavery? How can the attempt to reduce the number of uninsured Americans through an expansion of Medicaid and other programs be worse than slavery? Now, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in America at, except as punishment for a crime in 1865. Since then, African Americans have been lynched, had their farms confiscated, been denied the right to vote, and have had limited or no access to public and private facilities. For an American of Dr. Carson's intellect and stature to publicly make such assertions is historically inaccurate, irresponsible, and promotes many of the racist stereotypes that are being used to support the overturn of the American Care Act. Does Dr. Carson really believe that the ACA is worse than the Tuskegee syphilis experiment of 1932? This infamous clinical study was conducted by the U.S. Public Health Service on 399 African-American men from 1932 to 1972 to trace the natural progression of untreated syphilis. And the key word there is untreated. These human laboratory animals thought they were receiving, were receiving free health care from the United States government. But by the end of the experiment, 28 of the men had died directly from syphilis, 100 had died from related complications, 40 of their wives had been infected, and 19 of their children had been born with congenital syphilis. Here's another example. From 1920 to 1970, the state of North Carolina forcibly sterilized more than 7,600 women. Most of these women were poor and African American. This eugenics program began as a means to control the birth rates of poor white women, but quickly expanded as an attack on African-American women. Women were being sterilized like cats and dogs are spayed and neutered. Dr. Carson wants us to believe that the ACA is worse than this? As Carson is being promoted in conservative circles as an informed spokesperson on the talk circuit, he has quickly become a political minstrel show. He's jumping Jim Crow. To jump Jim Crow, that's a song and dance that was performed in blackface by a white comedian named Thomas Dartmouth around 1830. And that was the early minstrel era, era of American entertainment. It made a mockery of African Americans. It lampooned them as dim-witted, lazy, and buffoonish. The expression to jump Jim Crow came to mean to act like a stereotyped stage caricature of a black person, usually by a white person. Dr. Carson has once again put his black face on political ideology that is contrary to the interests of the African-American community and validates denigrating stereotypes perpetuated by its enemies. Earlier this year, Carson told a CPAC audience that nobody is starving on the streets of America. We have always taken care of the poor. We have churches, which actually are much better mechanisms for taking care of the poor because they're right there with them. This is one of the reasons we give tax breaks to churches. How foolish is that? 
He is lending his voice and his personal narrative to validate the conservative, quote unquote, blame the poor political agenda and undermine the social safety net in America. The argument is that the Carsons of the world have overachieved in spite of the odds. Therefore, the inability of the poor, stereotypically the black poor, in America to rise into the middle class or beyond is due to personal failure, lack of personal drive and initiative, and their dependence upon the government. Carson made it. Why can't they? The, now, the ACA is far from perfect. The flaws in the legislation will be flushed out and addressed over time, or it's going to die a natural death. How the Obama administration allowed the government webs website to go live without being beta tested, without anticipating the problems, and without immediate fixes for them is at least irresponsible. These issues should not invalidate the reality that providing access to health care coverage for more Americans is a good thing. As a physician, Dr. Carson should know better. If he has problems with the ACA, he should present his issues using accurate data and facts, not baseless political ideology and foolish hyperbole. Here's my final point. Dr. Carson's stature in the medical community makes his comments even more reckless. Even reasonable but uninformed people might try to find truth and value in his totally absurd observations. He is allowing the reputation that he has earned based upon his stellar professional accomplishments, his focus, his work ethic, and his commitment to excellence as a surgeon to be used as a front by white ultra-conservatives. He is attempting to undermine greater access to health care and other social programs, the social safety net that is needed now in this country more than ever. He's a pitiful one man minstrel show. He's jumping Jim Crow. And that's my final point. Thanks for listening. And hit me up on Facebook. Go to my Facebook fan page, Dr. Leon's Prescription, Dr. Leon's Prescription at Facebook.com and communicate with me there. Thanks again for listening. This has been Wilmer Leon and my final point.